concept of quadratic equations which is implied or which is important for class A okay so first we will see general equation or general representation of quadratic equation So we know that we will represent quadratic equation in the form ax square plus bx plus c. So if we write only this ax square plus bx plus c, this will be called as the quadratic polynomial. Okay? And if we write this is equal to 0, then this is the quadratic equation. Okay? So why we call quadratic? Because here the degree of this polynomial or this equation is 2, therefore we call it as quadratic equation. Okay? If it is a if degree is 1, then we will call it as a linear equation. Okay? If it is 3, then that is a cubic. If it is 4, then that is a bicondent. So here this equation is a quadratic equation. Now, if we write a x square plus b x plus c is equal to like this way, if I'm taking a common from this equation, so what is given? x square. Now we have a is not there, so we can write b upon a into x plus c upon a. Okay. Now this term I have converted complete square. So we have to add third term. We know that how to convert in complete square. Here we have to add third term. So how we add third term? Half into coefficient of x. So here I am finding this third term. Third term is equal to half into coefficient of x. Now coefficient of x is b by a bracket square. That is a b upon 2a bracket square. So this term we have to add here. So we will get x square plus b by a into x plus b by 2a bracket square. Now here we have to add this extra term. So we have to subtract also. So c by a minus b by 2a bracket square. Okay. So if we simplify this, a into x square plus b by a into x plus b by 2a bracket square plus this c minus b square here c by a minus b square by 4a square. Okay. Again if we simplify this, a into now this we can write x plus b by 2a bracket square. Okay. Plus if you make same denominator of this, we will get here 4ac minus b square upon 4a square. Okay. Again if you simplify this, we will get x plus b by 2a bracket square. 4ac minus b square, if I am taking minus in common, then minus b square minus 4ac upon 4a square. Okay? Now here b square minus 4ac that is a discriminant. We know that, so I am writing this now. Now here we know that b square minus 4ac is a discriminant. So, that is the B. So here we write like this way A into X plus B by so X plus B by 2A bracket square minus B upon 4A square. Okay. So this we can write X plus B by 2A bracket square minus root B upon 2A now we have formula that is x square minus b square a minus b a plus b. So 
a into x plus b by 2a plus root b upon 2a again a plus b and second is x plus b by 2a minus root b upon 2 okay now this I am writing like this way x minus here I am writing minus so minus in bracket minus b minus root b upon 2a and second is x if I am writing minus and common so minus b so minus b plus root b upon 2a ok now if we suppose that this is one root so a into x minus alpha and this is second root so x minus b ok so here we will get ax square or this ax square plus bx plus c this equation we can write a into x minus alpha into x minus beta where alpha is this and beta is this so alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c now here relation between zeros and its coefficients ok now we saw this ax square plus bx plus c we can write a into x minus alpha a into x minus beta where alpha and beta are roots of the quadratic equations and these roots we can represent as minus b minus root d upon 2a and minus b plus root d upon 2a where d is a discriminant so this d is equal to b square minus 4ac ok now we have to find the relation so ax square plus bx plus c this we can write a into x minus alpha into x minus beta so a into if you multiply this x square then minus beta x minus alpha x plus alpha beta ok so a into x square if we take minus x common so what is the meant alpha plus beta or beta plus alpha and plus alpha beta now if you multiply this a inside so we will get a x square minus a into alpha plus beta into x plus a alpha beta ok now these two equations are equivalent or equal so we can compare the corresponding terms means here this x square term and this x square term we have to compare so here coefficient of x square is a here also coefficient of x square is a then coefficient of x here is minus a into alpha plus beta and here coefficient of x is b ok so by using this we will get alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a ok that is the sum of the zeros is equal to minus b upon a that is minus into coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square similarly if we equate last term that is a c is equal to a into alpha into beta so we will get alpha into beta is equal to c by a. that is a product of terms or oh sorry product of zeros is equal to constant term divided by coefficient of x square so we will get two relations that is the alpha plus beta is equal to minus v by a and alpha into beta is equal to c by a. ok so here we can write like this way so sum of the zeros sum of zeros is equal to minus v by a and this is first relation and second relation product of zeros is equal to c by a. ok so if sum and product is given 
sum and product of zeros is given then if we have to form equation suppose sum of zeros is given and product of zeros is given then if you have to form equation then we can form equation like this way or polynomial we can write p of x is equal to a into or we can write k that is a constant k into x square minus sum of zeros into x plus product of zeros okay already we learned this in 10th standard so if product of zeros and sum of zeros is given then we can form a quadratic polynomial in this way so that is a k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta okay here k is any non zero constant okay so if we change the value of k we will get different set of equations or the equations having zeros are alpha and beta alpha and beta okay so we will get infinite number of equations if we change the value of k but zeros of that equations will be alpha and beta okay so if sum and product of zeros is given we can form equation in this way okay now we will take some examples based on this so first example is if a b c are in a b and one root of the equation a x square plus b x plus c is equal to zero is two. This a b c r means this a b c are in a b and one root is given that is a two. Then find the other root. Okay. Now here a b c r in a b given. Okay. Numbers are not given. So we have to first use property of a b. So if three numbers are in a b. That is A B C R in A B. So if A B C R in A B, then we know that two B is equal to A plus C. Two into middle term is equal to first term plus third term. That is a B is the arithmetic mean of A and C. So we have to use this property. So two B is equal to A plus C. Okay. Now what is e one? Two is the root of this quadratic equation. Means two is satisfying this quadratic equation. Okay, so therefore we will get a into two square plus b into two plus c is equal to zero. Okay, that is four a plus two b plus c is equal to zero. Now two b is equal to a plus c. So 4a plus instead of this 2b, we have to put a plus c. Plus c is equal to zero. Now 4a plus a that is a 5a and c plus c that is 2c. So 5a plus 2c is equal to zero. That is 5a is equal to minus 2c. So from this we will get c by a. So c by a. That is c by a is equal to c upon a. That is a phi upon minus two. Okay. So c by a means we can write product of roots or product of zeros. Also we can write is equal to phi by minus two. Because we know that c by a is equal to product of zeros. Now one zero is given two. Another zero we can suppose that alpha. So two into alpha is equal to five divided by minus two. So we will get alpha is equal to this two. If we shift here, that is five divided by minus four. So another root is five divided by minus four. Or we can write. Alpha is equal to minus five upon four. Okay, so mostly we have to write this negative sign to numerator. So alpha is equal to minus five upon four. So 
So this is first example. Now we will solve some more examples. Okay. The second example is if alpha and beta are the roots of the equation 2x square minus 35x plus 2 is equal to 0, then find the value of 2 alpha minus 35 bracket q into 2 beta minus 35 bracket q. Okay. Now if we will see if we expand this then that expression is very big to find the answer okay so we can use the alpha and beta are the roots of this equation given so we have to use this concept here now from this 2x square minus 35x plus 2 is equal to 0 this is called equation given and alpha and beta are the roots of the equation. Now alpha and beta are the roots of the equation. So alpha plus beta that we can find that is the minus b by so minus 35 by 2 that is 35 by 2 and alpha into beta that is a c by so 2 by 2 that is a 1 ok now we have to find the value of 2 alpha minus 35 bracket q and 2 beta minus 35 bracket q and product of that so if we expand this two terms and then if we find value that is very critical to find so instead of that alpha is the root of this equation so alpha is root of equation therefore alpha satisfying this equation so we can write 2 into alpha square minus 35 plus 2 is equal to 35 alpha so 35x is there so 35 alpha plus 2 is equal to 0 so 2 alpha square minus 35 alpha is equal to minus 2. Now we have this similar term is here 2 alpha minus 35. If we take alpha common from this, so we will get 2 alpha minus 35 is equal to minus 2. So value of 2 alpha minus 35 is if we shift alpha here, we will get 2 alpha minus 35 is equal to minus 2 by alpha ok similarly for beta beta is also root of this equation so similarly we will get 2 beta minus 35 is equal to minus 2 by beta ok now we have to find the value of this now we have value of 2 alpha minus 35 and 2 beta minus 35 so now we can find the value so 2 alpha minus 35 bracket q into 2 beta minus 35 bracket q so it is 2 alpha minus 35 minus 2 by alpha bracket q 2 beta minus 35 that is minus 2 by beta bracket q ok so if we q uh, if we take q1 q of this term then we will get that is a minus 8 by alpha q into minus 8 by beta q so this is minus minus plus 64 by alpha q into beta q that is we can write 64 by alpha into beta bracket q now alpha into beta we have value is 1 so 64 by 1 q that is a 64 so value of 2 alpha minus 35 bracket cube and 2 beta minus 35 bracket cube is 64 ok so if we use expansion and if we find this value then that is a critical to find so instead of that we have to use this method because alpha and beta are the roots of this equation and from this we will get value of 2 alpha minus 35 2 beta minus 35 ok now we will take next example ok 
Okay. Third example is if sum of the roots of the equation a plus one into x square plus two a plus three into x plus three a plus four is equal to zero is minus one. Find the product of the roots of the equation. Okay. So sum is given minus one. So sum of the roots is equal to minus d by a. And sum is given minus one, so minus one is equal to minus b is two a plus three upon a is a plus one. So we will get one is equal to this two a plus three upon a plus one. So two a plus three is equal to a plus one. So a is equal to minus two. Okay. Now a is minus two. We have to find product of the roots. So product of roots that is three a plus four c by a. Okay, I am writing first this c by a. So three a plus four that is a constant term divided by a is a plus one. Okay, so we have. Value of a is minus two, so if we put a is minus two here, so three into minus two plus four divided by minus two plus one, so three into minus two that is a minus six, minus six plus four that is a minus two, and minus two plus one minus one, so answer is two. So product of two is two. Okay. Now we will take. Finding the methods of uh, find. Okay, now we will take to find the roots of the quadratic equations by using different methods. We know that there are three methods. First one is factorization. Second one is completing square method, and third one is by using quadratic formula. Okay. Now we will see different methods to find roots of the quadratic equation. So first method is factorization. So here in this method we have to factorize this constant term, okay? And we have to write this factors in addition or subtraction form, okay? So we will get middle term. Or another name for this method is splitting middle term, okay? So here, factors of six we will get three and two. So three two is six, and if we add three and two, we will get middle term is five. So x square plus three x plus two x plus six is equal to zero. So if we take x common, x plus three. From this, if we take two common, x plus three. So again, if we take x plus three common, x plus three into x plus two. So here x remains, here two remains. Okay. So either x plus three is equal to zero, or x plus two is equal to zero. So x is equal to minus three, or x is equal to minus two. Okay. So roots or zeros of this quadratic equation is minus three or minus two. Okay. Now, so this is factorization method. Now we will solve another example by completing square method. So in this method, first we have to make coefficient of x square is unity. That is one. So here coefficient of x square is nine. So first we divide this quadratic equation by nine. So we will get x square minus fifteen by nine into x. Plus six by nine is equal to zero. So here we can reduce this also. So x square minus five by three into x plus two by three is equal to zero. Now this plus two by three we have to shift here. So x square minus five by three into x is equal to minus two by three. Now we have to make LHS is complete square. So here third term is not there. So third term we have to find by using this formula. So half into coefficient of x. 
here coefficient of x is minus 5 by 3 bracket square so if we reduce this means if term is reducible then reduce it otherwise directly take product and then take square of it so minus 5 by 6 bracket square that is a 25 by 36 so we have to add this 25 by 36 to both sides of this equation 1 so x square minus 5 by 3 x plus 25 by 36 and here minus 2 by 3 plus 25 by 36 so this is the perfect square of x minus 5 by 6 bracket square and if we simplify this here we have to multiply by 12 so 12 into minus 2 24 so 25 minus 24 that is a 1 divided by 36 now if we take square root on both sides so x minus 5 by 6 is equal to plus minus 1 by 6 when we take square root there are two roots plus means here 1 by 36 is there so square root of 1 by 36 is plus 1 by 6 or minus 1 by 6 now minus 5 by 6 if we shift here we will get x is equal to plus minus 1 by 6 plus 5 by 6 so if we take x plus 1 by 6 then 5 plus 1 6 6 by 6 is 1 or if we take minus 1 by 6 then 5 minus 1 by 6 that is a 4 by 6 so x is equal to 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 so roots are 1 or 2 by 3 this is by using completing square method okay and third one that is the last one is quadratic formula so quadratic formula we know that quadratic formula x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a this b square minus 4ac it's called as a discriminant and roots of quadratic equations depend on this discriminant okay so that nature of the roots we will discuss afterwards okay so here x is equal to minus value of b is 7 so minus 7 plus minus b square that is 7 square minus 4 value of a is 9 value of c is minus 2 okay divided by 2 into a that is a 9 so if we simplify this minus 7 plus minus 49 minus and this minus plus 9 4 is 36 2 is 72 upon 18 so minus 7 plus minus 49 plus 72 that is a 121 okay so if we simplify this minus 7 plus minus 11 upon 18 so x is equal to minus 7 plus 11 upon 18 or x is equal to minus 7 minus 11 upon 18 so x is equal to 11 minus 7 that is 4 by 18 or 2 by 9 and here x is equal to minus 7 minus 11 11 that is minus 18 upon 18 so answer is minus 1 ok so here roots are 2 by 9 or minus 1 ok so these are 3 methods to solve quadratic equations ok then we will discuss afterwards nature of the roots now we will see nature of the roots ok so nature of the roots is depend on discriminant that is uh, d is equal to b square minus 4 is so if d is greater than 0 then roots are real so roots are real and distinct ok or unequal so if d greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 then the roots are real and distinct or 
we can write unequal roots. Okay. So roots are here and unequal. If d is equal to zero, then roots are real and equal. Okay. So if d is equal to zero, roots are real and equal. If d greater than zero, roots are real and distinct. And if d less than zero, that is, if d is negative, then roots are not real. That is a we can say it is a imaginary roots. So here roots are not real or imaginary. When if d is less than zero. And if d greater than zero and or equal to zero, in that case roots are real. So if d greater than zero, it is real and distinct. D equal to zero, it is real and equal. And if d less than zero, it is not real, or we can say it is a imaginary. Okay. So we will take some example for finding nature of the roots. You know, we will take. Question that is determine the nature of the roots of following quadratic equations. Okay, so here are three quadratic equations. We have to find the nature of the roots. So first one is 2x square plus x minus 1. So we have to find discriminant that is uh, d is equal to b square minus 4ac. Here d is coefficient of x means that is 1. So 1 square minus 4 into a coefficient of x square that is 2 and c is the constant term. So 1 square is 1 minus minus plus 4 2 is 8. So 8 plus 1 is 9. So d is equal to 9. So that is d is greater than 0. So roots are real and unequal. Okay. So if d greater than 0 roots are real and unequal. If Equation is like this way x square minus 4x plus 4. So, discriminant of that is b is minus 4, so minus 4 square minus 4 into a is 1, c is 4. So, minus 4 square is 16. Square of negative number is a positive, so minus 4 square is a 16 and minus 16. So, d is equal to 0. So, if d is equal to 0, Roots are real and equal. So in this both cases roots are real. In first case it is a real and unequal, and in second case it is a real and equal. Now third case that is 2x square plus 5x plus 5. So in this d is equal to b square minus 4ac. So d is 5, so 5 square minus 4 into value of a is 2, value of c is 5. So 25 minus 40. So 25 minus 40 that is minus 15. So value of d is minus 15, that is d less than 0. And if d less than 0, then roots are imaginary or not real. Okay, so if d less than 0, roots are imaginary. Okay, now I will take some more example depend on nature of the roots. Okay, so in that question, nature of the roots is given and we have to find the value of unknown constant that is a k. Sometimes most we have to use it is a k. Okay, but that is any constant is there, we have to find the value of that constant but nature of the roots is given ok, so we will see that type of example the first example is find the value of k for which the equation 9x square plus 3kx plus 4 is equal to 0 has real roots so we know that when discriminant greater than 0 or discriminant equal to 0 then Quadratic equation have real roots means if d greater than 0 or equal to 0. So, that both condition we have to write in one condition.
equation that is a d greater than or equal to zero. So if d greater than equal to zero, then given equation has a real roots. So here it is given. So d greater than equal to zero. So d means that is a b square minus 4ac greater than equal to zero. So if we put value of b, a and c, so value of b is 3k. So 3k square minus 4 into a is 9 and c is 4 greater than equal to 0. So 3k square that is a 9k square minus 4 4 is a 16, 16 9 is a 144. So 9k square minus 144 greater than equal to 0 that is uh, if we take 9 common k square minus 16 greater than equal to 0. So if we divide this 9 k square minus 16 greater than equal to 0. Okay. Now here if k square minus 16 greater than equal to 0 then value of k how we find this we have to find the value of k which is satisfying this inequality okay so if we see this number like and if i'm dealing with this minus 4 and 2 so if we take values of k which are less than minus 4 including minus 4 means minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 and so on so if we take these values then it is this equation, this inequality is satisfied. Okay. So if I'm taking minus 4, minus 4 square is 16, 16 minus 16 is equal to 0. If I'm taking minus 5, minus 5 square is 25, 25 minus 16, 9. So 9 greater than greater than 0. Okay. So values which are less than minus 4, okay, less than or equal to, because here equal to sign is there. So values which are less than or equal to minus 4 satisfying this, in, this inequality. Okay. And this side, if I'm taking values 4, 5, 6, and so on. Okay. Means if I'm taking values greater than 4, greater than or equal to 4, okay, then also this inequality is satisfying. Okay. So all values means here from minus infinity to minus 4 okay or we can write like this way also k belongs to minus infinity to minus 4 okay here minus 4 is including therefore I am giving here close interval okay so for infinity and minus infinity we have to give open interval so k belongs to minus infinity to minus 4 okay or so union this is close interval 4 to infinity okay so we can take any value from minus infinity to minus 4 or 4 to infinity then that value is satisfying this inequality. So k belongs to this side. Okay. Minus infinity to minus 4 union 4 to infinity means this values I'm writing in the form of set. Okay. So this is the solution. Or values of k is from this set. Minus infinity to minus 4 union 4 to infinity okay so this is the values of k now we will take one more example the second example is find the value of k for which the equation x square plus 5kx plus 16 is equal to 0 has no real roots so this for the equation has no real roots means d less than 0 okay d less than 0 that is d square minus 4 is c less than 0 Okay, so if we put value of a, b and c, d is 5k, so 5k square minus 4 into a, 1, c, 16, less than 0, so 5k square that is 25k square minus 64 less than 0, so 
25 k square less than 64 so k square less than 64 by 25 okay so this inequality satisfied by values which are in between minus 8 by 5 and plus 8 by 5 if you find square root that is a 64 by 25 will get plus minus 8 by 5 so if we take values in between minus 8 by 5 and plus 8 by 5 then only this inequality will be satisfied okay if I am taking values which are less than minus 8 by 5 or if I am taking values which are greater than 8 by 5 then it is not possible to satisfy this inequality only which values satisfy this inequality which is in between minus 8 by 5 and 8 by 5 so k which is greater than minus 8 by 5 and less than 8 by 5 ok or we can write in set form k belongs to minus 8 by 5 and 8 by 5 ok so this is the continuous states all values are there between minus 8 by 5 and 8 by 5 ok but these two values are excluding ok because here strictly less than is there so minus 8 by 5 and 8 by 5 we have to exclude from this set meaning of this open interval means we have to exclude these values only we have to take in between values of minus 8 by 5 and 8 by 5 ok so k belongs to open interval minus 8 by 5 and open interval 8 by 5 ok so in next video we will discuss about